GC Gamer here, and this is another episode of Football Manager 2016 of the Pompey. If you have been following, we have finally, finally got promoted to the Sky Bet Championship. It's going to be our first season in the Sky Bet Championship, and it is our fifth season in the game, the start of our fifth season. So it took us four years to get promoted from Sky Bet League 2 to League 1 to the Championship. So, if we look at this board expectations for this season, you can see the minimum expectation is the team doesn't get involved in a Skybet Championship relegation battle. It's not too bad, to be honest. The FA Cup, we're expected to reach the fourth round. Carling Cup, who cares? We're expected to reach the third round. <laughs> sorry, but really, the Carling Cup, I don't know. I'm Capital One Cup, sorry. Carling Cup's back in the old days, huh? Capital One Cup, who cares about it? Really, it's not something I'm excited about, not something I really care about. And to be honest, it's just kind of like a fixture congestion. Maybe when eventually, maybe even next season, we get to the Premier League and we start to establish ourselves a bit more, have a really good reserve team, then perhaps we can use our reserves and young players in the Capital One Cup. But until then, I don't really give a crap about it. Sorry, just being honest. So the most exciting thing, I think, for every preseason is the transfers. Now you can see the board has given me a little bit of money, uh, a decent wage budget, still going to be the lowest in the league, I'm sure. But I have brought in some really good players, and I'm really excited to show you, especially one of them. One of them could be the difference between fighting for a relegation battle and pushing maybe the top half of the table if he can perform as well as I think he can. So if we go to transfers, forget about the two that I'm looking at right now, uh, they're not confirmed. Ricardo Bagadur, he is a uh, Croatian defender, did play for Fiorentina, but hasn't really done much. Uh, he's been on loan for a couple of seasons, but has played well, as you can see here. But um, I haven't had time to scout him fully, however, but because the season is beginning, I just want to get a bid out there. So I have offered him a contract. There's a lot of other teams who are interested in him. I'm not sure if I'm going to get him, but he could be a good player. Now I could wait and scout him, but then I might lose the opportunity. So I've decided to bid for him while I can, and hopefully he could turn out pretty good, and hopefully he'll be joining Portsmouth FC. The second one, Cheku Kuyati. Now in real life you might have heard of this guy, I actually think in real life he's a pretty decent player as well, and he can play both in defence midfield or midfield centre. He's also cover for defence, which is pretty impressive. So if we look, he would be our joint second best possibly, depending on if this is three and a half or four stars, which the black part means the scouts aren't 100% sure yet. And he could also be a good centre midfielder. In fact, our second best, or maybe even joint best centre midfielder. So it could help us decide who is going to be playing this season, if, if, if we manage to get him. Now again, he's wanted by a few clubs, Huddersfield, Malaga, and of course we're the only ones to put in a bid so far, and to offer him a contract. So hopefully we can get him. The problem is we haven't been able to offer him quite as much as I wanted, due to us already being over our wage budget. Now we're over our wage budget because we have made quite a few signings. If you look here, we have Jordan Rossiter on loan again. We had to pay a loan fee this time, but I'm more than happy to do that. He has been at the club since pretty much the start. I mean, the second season, he's been absolutely phenomenal every single season, even the step up to League One didn't phase him, played even better in his second season in League One. Now we're in the championship, I'm tipping him to have a big season again. The coaches think that he's a good player for Premier Division sides. And he's here, at Little Old Portsmouth. So I'm happy to have him back. Keenan Bennett, uh, loanee from Tottenham. He has play been playing on loan at different clubs over the last few seasons. Um, Tottenham are, are affiliates now. Um, which is interesting. They offered a few players out to us, so I've decided to take a couple. I didn't want to exploit the system too much, so I've only taken those that I think might be rotation, possibly starters, but not too many players. I could have had a full team of Tottenham players, really, if if I had taken them all on loan. 
Uh, but the second one from Tottenham I got was Alex Salinas. Even though we don't often play with an ad attacking midfield center or an advanced playmaker, um, he could be a good player. Him and Joe Kobo are going to have that attacking midfield role when we play it. If you remember the two tactics, which I'll briefly show you and talk to you in a bit more detail later, one of them is just our standard tactic, which you use quite often, and one is a slightly more attacking, controlling tactic with an advanced playmaker, which has been Kobo in the past, who's been excellent. I love you, Kobo. Um, but also, Alex Salinas could play there. Something interesting about Kobo that I'm going to show you in just a minute. So as you may or may not know, Joe Kobo is a legend. Uh, Joe Kobo came in last season for 425k and he really played well and he's one of those guys who I have high hopes for the future. Not only is he a legend in Football Manager, but he's also a legend in real life. As we can see from his Twitter account, Joe Kobo retweeted me and he favorited my tweet when I called him a legend after I found him on Twitter. I only found him on Twitter because, really, he's been one of those players that I just love to have around the club. So it's amazing that he actually took some time to like my tweet, favourite my tweet, and even retweet it. Pretty cool, huh? The more you say tweet, the less it makes sense. As we move on to look at our other transfers, you will see that we're still on that France hype. So, last season, we got a few French players. Um, we got Bra Brahim Konate, who has been absolutely excellent. And we also got um, Ibrahima Sisse and Joe Kobo. Love you, Joe Kobo. Um, <laughs> Brahim Konati has been absolutely amazing. Last season, 39, 39 games, 7 goals, 9 assists, 6 player of the match, 7.54 average rating. You are a legend. He's a good player for most Skybet Championship sides. And I really think he could be another player who does really well this season. Anyway, like I said, we've been on that France hype, so I've decided to continue that France hype. And the first player we got from France was David Traore. David Traore is a right winger. Uh, currently, he is not going to be starting too many games with Alex Pritchard, the first choice, and quite a few players above him. However, he has the potential to be a very good player. So hopefully we'll see him improve with the club, and when we get to the Premier League... Hopefully he'll have improved enough to be at least a rotation player. Getting him on a free doesn't really hurt much anyway. Kevin and Doram, again on a free, um, from Borg and Bress. You'll notice we got a couple of players from them, which is pretty cool. Um, he is a good defensive midfielder, a good centre midfielder, and decent at midfield centre. So if you look, he is our currently our third best defensive midfielder, depending on whether we get Koyate is a big um, indication of how much he's going to play. But also he's our fourth best centre back, so it's good to have him in the team as kind of a rotation option. Again, I'm only paying him a little bit, he's a backup player, he knows it, so he's not going to expect too much playing time. And he's got some of those key stats that I really want in a defender, such as decent marking, tackling, and positioning. And I really like to have strong defenders, so it's good to see that he's strong. Uh, Ilyas Mufa Sabatayo. I have no idea how to pronounce anything, do I? Uh, he is another good uh, player, but again, for the future. Decent goalkeeper, definitely second choice. He's had a good upbringing at Manchester United and Standard, but at the moment he will just be a reserve. He could become excellent. So high hopes for him. Again, if I get to loan him out at some point this season or maybe next season, that wouldn't be too bad. Hamza Sake, another player who has a lot of potential for the future. I like to sign young players. Uh, 23 and under if pref uh, are preferable unless they're really, really good. So again, lots of potential. Another player who could play in that centre attacking midfielder spot when I need it. And I have been using that more often recently. Um, he comes third after Kobo and Salinas at that, play at that attacking midfield centre spot. Uh, he can also play on the right wing. Uh, again, he probably won't get too many games, but could be one for the future. Now... You'll notice I have a bit of a love affair with Borg in Bress. 
I'm probably saying that terribly, so if you're French out there and you hate the way I say it, please let me know in the comments below. Jordan Siabachu, 750k. You'll have noticed that we've only paid 2.1 as our record since I've come to the club. So this is our second biggest signing, Hayden White, third biggest signing, but really, apart from Alex Pritchard, this is the big signing that we've had in recent times. And I'm going to show you why he's worth it. Jordan Siabachu, striker, he can play as a target man, complete forward poacher, or an advanced forward, all pretty well, target man being his preference. If we look at the advanced forward role, which is what I like to play, he's still got absolutely great stats, especially for this level. 13 finishing, 14 anticipation, 13 composure, 12 off the ball. He's got decent acceleration and pace. He can also dribble the ball, which is important for an advanced forward. If you look at this guy compared to some of the strikers in the league, he is absolutely amazing. Four caps already for America, and he could be even better in the future. He's a leading player for most Skybet Championship sides, and hopefully he'll get a ton of goals for us this season. I'm going to show you a sign of thing to come. A sign of things to come in a few minutes with Jordan C. About you. The next few signings are loan signings. Some I've had my eye on for a while. Ricky Cartman. Um, not much to say except for he's going to be a sub defensive midfielder. He's got a lot of ability to to improve in the future. Um, at the moment, he's going to be second choice defensive midfielder behind Jordan Rossiter. He can also play midfield centre, which he'll get hopefully quite a few games, but I've got a lot of competition there. And he can play defender centre if needed. Luca Domenico, um, second choice left back behind Polomat, possibly. Even though he's better, I really like the way Polomat played last season, and I want to give him another chance to continue to improve with the team. Uh, next is Jamie Baez. Baez? Baez? Um, another person with a lot of potential for the future, even though he's 24. He's currently a decent player for most Skybet Championship sides. He's going to be our second choice striker. Hopefully he can get a few games. Um, he hasn't really played much over the last few years, but his previous record in Uruguay was pretty decent. Uh, last two are free transfers, Gabriel Rares Flores, another one that I looked at through the under-21s of all the national teams. I brought him in on a free, and he is again one for the future. Could be a Skybet Championship striker. And then Sean Murray, I got on a free, and he's one of those players who's going to be, be competing for that midfield spot. Jordan Rossett as defence midfield, Konate is probably a first choice. May, Cartman, Murray, all could be in there with a shout in centre midfield. Jordan Rossett may also move up to defence uh, to centre midfield occasionally from defence midfield, and if he does, that would leave spaces for people like Ricky Cartman and Kevin and Durham to play defence midfield. So I've got pretty good options in that centre midfield area. As for players leaving us, Raras Flores came in, left on loan straight away. Uh, Paul Coots went for 145k. Reason why is he's declining, he's getting a little bit older, and he's not going to uh, be a first choice player anymore. So even though it's sad to see him go, because he's been excellent for the last four seasons, I didn't want to keep him and end up just having him on the bench. Apart from Paul Coots, the rest have been a few loans, uh, some players who I thought could be future players for Portsmouth, Portsmouth FC. They have also left for pretty much no money, just to get them off the wage bill. Um, Mustafa Karayel, who I bought last season, he didn't really perform, so he was let go for 100k. A little bit of a loss, but not too much. Um, Ben Close, out on loan. Jack Watmore, out on loan. Decent player for the future, still Jack Watmore. The big two are John Fleck and Connor McAlany. Sheffield Wednesday just got into the Premier League. Uh, last season they came second, I believe, in the Championship. So they got promoted to the Premier League. And they've decided to take a punt on two of my players. 
Now, it's quite surprising because John Fleck for 850k, he didn't play that great for us. I mean, he got two goals, no assists, and a 7.12 rating, so it's not too bad. But really, I think they kind of overpaid for him. Uh, and they also signed Connor McElhinney. McElhinney. Again, I think they overpaid for him. He didn't play well for us. He didn't play well for Birmingham the season before. So really, I'm glad to get him off the wage bill. Especially when I've got other options. Now, you might have noticed that I've skipped over a couple of players. Adam Chickson, firstly. He was good when he played. Paula Matt was better. And unfortunately, I just couldn't see a way for him to get back in the team. And the one that really, really breaks my heart is Sana. Sana has been an absolute legend for Portsmouth FC. My first season at the club, I brought him in, and he was a revelation. He got even better in the second season in Skybet League 2 when we got promoted. Then, in our first season in Skybet League 1, he played pretty well, but he couldn't quite carry that League 2 form. And then last season, he just didn't really play. So unfortunately, even though I have a lot of love for Sana, and even though he was just fantastic for us, he's had to go. And I'm glad he's found another club, because really, I want to see him do well in the future. I want to see him continue to do what he loves, which is play football. Thank you for your time, Sana. We love you. And just to show how much he's loved, if you look at the club, and we look at um, favoured personnel, you'll see Sana is right there as one of our favoured personnel. Interesting to note also that Hayden White, Rossiter, and the recently departed Paul Coots are all in the icon section. Alex Pritchard has already become a favoured personnel too. So, how do you guys think we're going to do this season? It might help a little bit to have a look at our pre-season friendlies. Now a mixed bag here, a 1-1 one -one draw of Rangers is pretty good, especially with, um, like this was before we got some of our signings, so as you notice here, we haven't got as many of some of the players that I've shown you in the transfers, such as Jordan, Siabachu, and a few others. Um, then we lost 2-0 in the friendly semi-cup final. Uh, wasn't a great game to watch, wasn't a great game to play in I guess either. We then came back with a bang, beating Morecambe 4-0 with a Ryan Kent hat-trick. So again, Ryan Kent is still with the club, and he's been on loan every season for the last few anyway, and been playing pretty well. Then came the match of the preseason, a 7-0 thrashing of Andover. You'll see uh, Ricky Cartman got in with a goal, Jordan Siabachu got a hat-trick, Polomat got a goal, Salinas got a goal, and Adam May got a goal. It really was a great game to be a part of, and a great game to watch. Lastly, we played Tottenham, due to being affiliates with them, and unfortunately we lost 2-0, a Christian Burgess own goal, and a Terry Andrews 93rd minute goal, just to put the boot in when we were already down. Again, I wasn't too bothered about it, it's only a friendly and the thing I'm really excited for is the next match. We're playing Hull away. Um, I'm hoping, hoping for a good start to the season. Uh, it's going to be untested waters. So we'll see how we do there. We have unfortunately got four players out injured right now. Um, so that might have a bit of a part in what happens in that match. Um, those four players... Uh, Joe Walsh, Ajim Ibrahimi, Jordan Rossiter, and Luca Dominico. So we have got a few players out. You'll also notice that our squad is ridiculously huge right now. Part of that is because we've got a few loanee players in. Part of that is because I haven't clicked on unavailable, which is what I usually do. And if we do that, it looks a lot more manageable. Without those trial players in, um, we actually look like we've got a decent squad. So, our finances. That's the other big thing about this game. I never want to see this balance too far in the red. Obviously, it's going to happen occasionally, but I don't want Portsmouth to go the same way they did in real life, where they rise up the leagues, they spend too much money, 
and then they go bankrupt. So it's really important for me to always keep the overall balance in the white. Lastly, I did say that I was going to look at tactics. Um, so the tactics we've been using are these two, Pompey 1 and Pompey 2. Uh, Pompey 1 is to retain possession, clear balls to flanks, flanks, look for overlap, play wider, close down more at a higher tempo with a 4 3 3 ish. Uh, different people call this formation different things. A 4 1 2 3 wide, all these different things. I don't really care what's called. All I'm going to call it is Pompey 1. Pompey 2, like I mentioned before, a bit more aggressive, um, still with the same instructions, but with an advanced playmaker instead of that defensive midfielder. So I'm excited for this first game of the season. Most likely our starting lineup will be Backman in goal, with Hayden White on the right, Burgess and Pelazoglu in centre center defence, Polomat on the left. Uh, we'll probably start with Ricky Cartman, defensive midfield, and Adam May, ball winning midfielder, and Brahim Konate, centre midfielder attack. On the right, of course, we'll start with Pritchard, who is absolutely amazing. And on the left, we'll probably start with Kent, considering that he got a hat-trick during pre-season. Jordan Siabachu is always going to start up top if he's available. And our bench will consist of a few of the other players. Indoram, Murray, Kobo, for if you want to go more attacking. McAvoy, Saki, and Bayes as well as well, probably Elias Mufa Sepatayo. So hopefully we can win this first game of the season. Like I said, if there's anything you want to see more of within this, whether it's my profile, whether it's uh, a bit more history about Portsmouth and about what's happened since I've been here, or whether it's anything else, please let me know. Thanks again for watching, and thank you for waiting for two weeks for this update. Hopefully I'll get back into the routine of putting one or two updates out a week. Please like, comment and subscribe for this slightly longer episode. I promise I'll be a bit quicker in the future. I just am a bit excited about getting into the championship. Thanks again. Good night.